Hello friends, it's Phil. It's day two at Eric's place. We're renovating a 90 square meter lawn today. Yesterday, for reference, we cleared the lawn. It starts to rain a little bit. Um, and then we cut the lawn and it starts to rain a little bit more. And then we scarified the lawn and it tanked it down for the rest of the day. So the rest of the day, which was unforecast rain, stopped playing. So today, hopefully, you can see that the sun's out, the sky's blue, and uh, if we're lucky, we'll be able to finish off this one today, completely. So uh, join me while we travel through the renovation process, day two of the renovation process, I should say. So someone asked yesterday, um, how much Jack's Magic do you use on a 90 square meter lawn? Now, I will answer that in two ways. The first thing is, if I take a little tour of this lawn, is that um, we have a lawn in various stages of condition. So we've got some thinner areas in terms of grass coverage, some no grass coverage areas, some of the heavy used grass areas, and uh, areas where there is a bit of grass. So typically, you, if you've got a lawn that's got relatively good grass coverage, you can actually uh, dress it off at around about 10 bags per, oh, sorry, 10 meters per bag of Jack's Magic. However, if the lawn needs a bit more coverage, like this area, and uh, reseeding over the back there, you're gonna have to use uh, one bag for say seven to eight square meters of Jack's Magic. It's not an exact science, but I will try and show you as we go through the day um, the differing techniques across the differing grasses. Um, so yes, you can see, here we go. Um, that area is gonna need a bit more coverage and this area is gonna need less coverage. So there's a little trick um, or a little tip actually, when you go grabbing and buying your Jack's Magic, uh, if you if you buy it from a stack that gets soaking wet, the bags are really, really heavy <clears throat> because the magic inside is wet. Now, what you want to do is you want to pick up your bags and you want to kind of feel that they are compact and uh, dry, sort of slightly like, obviously experience teaches you what's wet and what's dry. But um, what you want is Jack's magic that is dry, not Jack's magic that is wet. That's a uh, really important, really important thing. You can't dress uh, compost on a lawn if it's wet. It needs to be dry to get the coverage correct. So the top tip when you're seeding is to make sure that you have your application rate closed enough that you can go over the lawn in one direction and then take a second pass over it in another direction. So you get all the coverage in all the places. The tip with seeding actually is when you seed, um, always have more than you need and over broadcast or broadcast over the lawn twice. Um, what you'll find is if you don't cover over your seed, you will have friends appearing very quickly, feeding on the lawn, like that little fella there who's just decided he'll come for breakfast. So uh, keep in mind, if you don't dress over the seed, uh, your lawn will become, or could become, may become a huge grass um, a few a huge bird feeder I should say so uh, there's not much bird activity around here but they can be and you only need a pack of starlings some crows or pigeons to arrive and they will hoover up most of the seed uh, in a good sitting so they're not very clever birds if you cover over the seed just slightly with enough dressing uh, they can't see most of it so therefore they don't try and uh, feed on it Hey, even though this looks like these bags are only a few kilograms, they're not. They're actually quite heavy. They're around about 20 odd kilograms, I reckon. They're slightly wet as well, so they might be even slightly heavier. But as you can see, I'm whizzing through them, chucking it around the lawn. There is a logic to it, which I'll show you in a little bit. Anyway, better get on, hey? So there's a bit of a system to laying the bags. If you look closely, 
I always lay them label side up. And the other thing is I'll always lie them in the direction uh, that I'm gonna spread them. So what that means is, to be really easy, it what I do is I pop open the bags and then I drift them across. The theory being that I've lifted the bags once and what I don't want to do is lift them again. So I pop them over drag, uh, to empty the contents. So I'm going to show you that. It's a bit windy today, so I'm going to have to hold on to you maybe. So, uh, so opening the bags, label up, get the knife, get your trusty tool out and just pop the bag open like that. So much easier on the other side is the seam that holds the bag closed. It makes it more difficult. So literally we'll just pop around the lawn and just pop open the bags like so. Um, it's as simple as that. Just nice sharp knife, pop them open. And uh, yeah, put your foot on the bag keeps it in place that's the other thing maybe a, a very top tip so I've got three more to do and that will be all the bags opened up there you go all the bags are ready for dragging across the lawn which I'll show you So there's a top tip to this and the idea is, is you want to split the bag on the logo facing you, put a slit across the top, make sure you've got the bag fully open and then just kind of lift it up, agitate it a bit and shake it across the lawn. It makes it lighter work. Right, so this is the kind of midpoint of doing the seeding and dressing. Uh, I'm gonna try and say something profound at this point. Right, so I've obviously dressed it across the lawn in a kind of a roundabout fashion, which is the way I think most people would do it, right? Um, now the thing about it is, is there are two sides of the rake that you can use. One side is for pushing material around, pushing the compost around to dress the lawn. And keep in mind that we're only dressing seed, so we don't need to bury it as such. We just need to make sure that the birds can't see the seed. And a little bit of coverage will aid germination. So the rake has two sides. There's the pushing around side, and then there's the gentle raking side. And you'll see that when I do this, um, which I'll video the whole process and then speed it up probably, is um, you'll see that I will flip the rake over progressively throughout. Now the other thing is on the rear section where the new seed is, where the new lawn is going to be, you have to be a little bit more gentle over there and you'll find that what you don't do is push material over the top of it. What you have to do is lift and lightly flick the um the compost it's the same actually to get coverage across the whole of the lawn evenly you have to learn to push and flick push and flick i'll try and demonstrate it in this video <clears throat> the pushing and flicking means that you get the material to broadcast sort of over the seed evenly um but it's a skill that I have learned over the 47,000 hours that I've been working on lawns, so I don't think it's the easiest skill to understand. But I'm going to try and video it uh, so you can see the movement of the two sides of the rake and also some of the techniques around the lifting and flicking. Yes, my friends, lifting and flicking. So um, let's get on with that. That will be the seed coverage piece done. Uh, it takes a little while, so um, let's do a video and we'll speed it up and look and watch very, very closely that process because it's probably the most important process in the seeding. Uh, in, the, in the seeding, after actually the seeding broadcast, getting the broadcast correct is quite important so you get equal coverage of the new seed across the whole of the new lawn. Because keep in mind, like I said yesterday, we're creating a hybrid, unique lawn because we're renovating and adding to the existing grass sympathetically. So um, 
hopefully that was useful. So this is my trusty raking technique. Now the most important thing that you can't see, probably because of the speed of the video, is that I actually use both sides of the rake to do two different things. Use the raking bit to rake around the materials, but use the other side, the flat bit, to push the materials around. It's actually surprising that this, whilst it looks like a relatively straightforward job, just raking a bit of material around, it's actually quite hard. It requires a little bit of effort and focus and pushing, but it doesn't take long. So <clears throat> that's the area raked off. In this particular occasion, actually, because the grass was growing in very distinct tufts, i.e. the really healthy grass or the remaining grass on the lawn that hadn't been ripped out. Really, really tough, really, really tough. And uh, because, because of the condition of the lawn, the minimum cut could really get down to without scalping the, the life out of it and probably destroying my lawnmower blade was around about 30 mil. So, <clears throat> The compost actually, when it was dressed, you know, I talked about the shallows and the crowns in the previous video, is that the um, the, the shallows were actually quite deep because the plant, they say the plant has a sort of real massive density around uh, 25, 30 mil. So it's almost like there were little pockets where the compost dropped into, which is very unusual. Usually when you dress a lawn that's got like no grass or consistent coverage, um, and you can therefore get a cut much shorter. You can kind of smooth off the compost. So, so on this particular occasion, what you've seen done, whilst it looked simple and relatively easy, it wasn't, it's actually, it was quite, uh, quite evident that there was a, a lot of redragging, digging. It was almost like bringing the compost out of the shallows. Um, but I'll give you a little look round. Um, pretty consistent really because of those shallows they're almost like little planting little planters so the seed's going to do really well I would have thought um, so let's go and have a quick look shall we? so keep in mind that the uh, this area is now going to be dressed off with a light fleece slash germination sheet slash bird excluder obviously the compost I've dressed on the areas that really the seed need the most support uh, along the flank here underneath the hedge um, the seed will germinate but won't grow particularly well so um, uh, there's a load of weed action that's going to come underneath that I reckon so um, let's not over invest in the areas that are not going to grow um, this area here you know I talked about gently moving the compost over on top you might have seen it in the earlier watch it again but there's a kind of a flicking motion. You almost want to throw the compost on top of the seed in order that you do a minimum amount of moving it around, ideally so you get the, the most consistent coverage on this. Only needs a little bit because keep in mind, the germination sheet will keep everything in place. And with these showers that we're having, it's quite a top tip to uh, to put a sheet on for a couple of weeks just so the seed can set itself up so that's that all done that's that all done so um i'm going to put a feed over the top now and i haven't used the topsoil no need to it's quite it feels quite smooth really um the the crowns are a bit deceptive they're almost like the tufts of the grass are creating crowns having walked on it for a fair bit now um so run a feed over the top uh, put the topsoil back in the van and um, and then cover it over. Right, so we're at this point in the video where I'm going to sit down and have a little chat with you, my dear friends. So, look, um, for those that have joined me on this little uh, journey to build a YouTube channel this year, 2024, uh, actually keep in mind that I actually jumped onto YouTube in anger, I think about 12 years ago. I should have kept going, really, shouldn't I, on reflection. But look, um, I currently, as of today, today's count, there are 490 subscribers. Now think about it like this. 
right? I've been at this now for, um, for a, this say this channel has been building now for a couple of weeks, and I guess I never really kind of um, set myself any particular goals a couple of weeks ago. But what we have now is 490 subscribers, and if you just think about that for a minute, 490 people across the world at this precise moment are viewing this channel all to do with, I don't know, me building a business, I don't know, me growing grass and doing lawn renovations, whatever it is, is um, it's absolutely extraordinary. If you imagine putting 490 people into one pub, bar, club, uh, football pitch, sports ground, 490 people makes quite decent audience doesn't it sort of thing so i'd like to say thank you for all of you who have subscribed to the channel so far look it's just the beginning and i will get better the content will get a bit get better the stories will get better the insights will get more imaginative i don't know um so thanks for the 490 people so far over to the germination sheet this is the super lightweight stuff you can get i think they say it's 17 grams a meter but it's all you need for the job in hand so i'm going to just drop it down there we're going to start on this edge here we're going to roll the the fleece out onto that bit then we're going to go up to the top and we're going to roll it down and we'll cover this section here that won't take too long uh, well it probably takes a bit longer than you're surprised and then we'll go and do that bit in the corner uh, and that will be the fleecing done so let me crack on with that oh by the way you know i talked about the amount of pegs you need so these are what i call pegs i think in the trade or wherever you go um sprayed up the same color as the bumper bar on the hater the project that if you haven't heard about i'm customizing my hater gradually as we build this channel but these i think they're actually called staples in the horticultural sort of growing world um but they are very effective at um covering enough if, if your pegs are too small basically it's very easy for the fleece to tear so this kind of gives a bit more um of width of purchase for the said fleece so uh, let me um just do a bit of this and i'll show you how i do it right hopefully you can see what's going on um i'm just going to roll out the first section of fleece and peg it up and then i'll take you over and you can have a little look how it's done. <laughs> This is not an exact science, but I will tell you my tips on doing it the best you can. So on the front edge, always leave a little bit more than you want. Um, that kind of means that as the fleece kind of moves around and stretches a little bit, you should find that it stays on the lawn. And then pegging it out, um, I always try and push the pegs down and bend them over slightly. So the most important thing is with this is to get some tension on the fleece in order that it kind of pulls tall. Any non-tensiony bits will flap in the wind and then before you know it, you have your fleece flapping. So it's a peg every, what's that about? Every eight meters is a peg or a staple. Um, and that should keep it in place. So uh, I'm just gonna, as you can see, the wind is gonna pick it up. So if the wind, if the prevailing wind's coming from this side, um, well actually no, it feels like it's coming all over the place actually. We're gonna have to just put all of the pegs that are in the box over there to keep this down. Anyway, I'll do the second roll. Um, stapley pegs have been with me for <laughs> like a lot of things uh, some of my nice things have been with me for some time um, these have been with me for about two years now if you're looking carefully at how this is being done you'll notice that I 
one thing, there's two things that really, really uh, require expertise, let's say. One is getting the tension on the germination sheet correct because you want real tension. If you look at it, there's no flapping, even though there's quite a decent bit of wind here, there's no flapping in it. And that's really, really important. It takes a little bit of experience to get that right. And the second thing is, is that you overlap each sheet by 100 mil. And uh, that will mean that your sheets should stay in place. They do move around a bit. They do move around a bit and they can get pulled and torn and tugged. So uh, this is, these staples do a very good job of releasing the tension that you create in, uh, in push, pulling it down. So we've got one, two, three, three more rolls to do, uh, roll outs, let's say, and then the corner section and uh, we'll all be done. Very good. There is, dear friends, some truth in doing things well, let's say. And let's say a few years ago, I decided that um, <clears throat> if you're gonna do one thing, you might as well do it to the best of your ability. So what you're seeing here is uh, years and years and years of experience of doing one thing well. And uh, let's say um, we're nearly done. We're nearly done. Uh, there's a little more tensioning and picking out to do, but um, it looks quite sexy. Probably the wrong thing to say. Right, so um, we're done, we're done. I'm gonna show you in a minute, I'm gonna do a big reveal. And I've decided, uh, I've made a few decisions around the lawn. So um, let me just talk you through where we're at with it and what's gonna happen next, because we haven't finished yet. So seeing as it's a windy day, uh, it helps with one of the tests that I do after the fleece has gone down. Now keep in mind that there is a, there's a very consistent breeze here you can see licking the germination sheet just gently now keep in mind because it's been done so well let's say i haven't done this once i've done this hundreds of times is that you can see the wind licking now typically if it's a windless day what i do is i get my blower out and i blow over the top of the germination sheet in the direction of what i think would be the prevailing wind just to make sure that it's pegged down enough to keep it in place so you can see that bit there flapping that's a bit loose so we need to tighten that up but really the most important next stage is to go round uh, let the wind lick it see where the tension isn't tensionized 
and then use some more picks. So if you see here, I have another 20 or so pegs to go round to just put the tension into the germination sheet. So I'm going to do that. Um, the next job. Right, here we go. This is the the big reveal, or the little reveal, I should say. I'm not sure, but two days work. That's what it takes me. So considering if you're a DIYer, it's gonna take you a good weekend or two. And actually, if I was a DIYer, I'd probably do it in two parts. Do the prep one weekend, and then do the uh, reseeding, dressing, and the sheep work another weekend. So you see the wind? 
that's licking the front edge there but i think this has got some vigor to it i think that's going to lift the front edge but it's not too much of a worry so that's held down with a little smile over there um so that is the lawn covered and ready to do its thing ready to grow i'm going to leave this area here um it's pretty rough really so uh we'll leave that that's an old-fashioned bird bath i reckon and there's the pillar uh, anyway that is the end of the job that's it we're done a little bit more pegging i think and then i'll i'll be gone anyway but if you're this is the end of the video and if you have got all the way through that well done if you've watched the previous um the first part uh well done if you've subscribed welcome and if you've hit liked or comment tid then good on you um so that's it that's a 90 square meter lawn reconditioned renovated in two ish days um couldn't have been done any faster um so if you have any questions uh, if you want to see more of this happening because it will um, there are many lawns that will be reconditioned over the, through the year. I think I'll be working on about 80 uh, once the season gets started. So um, I will share the journey as I go. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, catch you soon. Ta-da. Bye.